Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to be talking about the catalytic converter. We're going to talk about what its functionality is, how it works, and why so many people want to steal them from your vehicle. Let's go ahead and get started. This one here that we're going to be looking at came off of one of my vehicles. It actually had two of them. You can see here where the pipe kind of was cut off, but this one had two. Not all vehicles have two. A lot of them just have one. It all depends on how many banks you have, which is basically your your exhaust manifold. If you have two banks, then your exhaust manifold has two sides. You have what's a bank one and a bank two. Your bank one is your cylinder one side. Your bank two is your cylinder two side. And when those exhaust manifolds come off, then they have the two exhaust pipes. You'll normally have two catalytic converters. In the case of this one, you had the two. And then as it got near the muffler, it turned back into one, one muffler, one tailpipe. On newer vehicles, because they have the dual exhaust with the dual mufflers on a lot of them, you'll just have the two on each side and they'll just go straight back. A lot of cars, if you don't have multiple banks, you'll just have one. We're going to head underneath a couple vehicles so I can show you, but as we have this close up here that I removed, you can see here's in the, one of the O2 sensors. So this is our catalytic converter right here. You have this piece here that connected to the exhaust manifold coming off of the engine, connected here, came through the catalytic converter, then out to the exhaust. This is what is known as your upstream um, O2 sensor. If you want to know more about oxygen sensors and things like that, you can check out some of my videos down in the description. I'll have links to those. I'll also have one across the top. But this one here comes before your catalytic converter. So this is your bank one, um, sensor one, or what's also known as an upstream sensor. And then right here, there's a hole where, and if I unscrew this one, I'll show you. Normally, your downstream sensor would be screwed in here, and that's what's known as either your sensor two or your downstream sensor. So the only reason I have them in here is because we're going to take a borescope camera, and I'm going to actually film down in here so you can see where the oxygen sensor comes into the exhaust pipe, and then we'll take a look at the, the honeycomb uh, piece on the catalytic converter, and then we'll also do it on this back side where we can see as the exhaust gas has passed through and then hits its downstream sensor out to the exhaust pipe. We're going to take a look at that in this video as well. We're also going to go ahead and cut one of these open so we can look at what's inside of it and I can explain what those different um, parts of the catalysts do and, and the placement of those. So let's head now to a couple vehicles so I can show you where you'll probably find it on your car if you're looking from underneath. Coming underneath this vehicle, you can see right here. That's one of your catalytic converters. You can see the other one there on the other side. Let's see if I can get a better shot of it there. But right there, that is the bank two. This one is the bank one. And then if we look up, you can see where it goes up into the exhaust manifold. And then you can see if we work our way back there, there's the pipe going out and then to the exhaust pipe. This is on another vehicle. This is a Jeep Wrangler, an old TJ. You can see it tucked right up here above this little shield right there, but that's the catalytic converter. So there's your pipe coming down from the engine and the exhaust manifold hits the catalytic converter and then it works its way all the way down to the muffler right there and then the tailpipe. Here's another vehicle. This is a 1.6 liter four cylinder, a little Kia. But there's our exhaust manifold coming down, connecting there to the catalytic converter. And you can see here's our catalytic converter going down. There's our exhaust pipe going down to the muffler and then working its way out. Now, a lot of people ask, like, why does my car have a catalytic converter? If you have one that's not functioning properly and you generate a check engine code or when you go to get your emissions, if they put the, um, the device on your tailpipe to test the, the gases coming out of there, if it's not working properly, you'll fail. They're expensive to replace unless you can do them yourself. A lot of times you have to weld a new one in. This particular vehicle that I did here, it just bolted onto the exhaust manifold and then down near the muffler. Some of those are that easy. Some of them you have to get welded, but either way, even if you do them yourself, they are expensive to purchase to do on your own. They're hundreds of dollars. If you haven't done it in a garage, it's thousands of dollars. So to sum it up, a lot of people will ask, well, what is it and why do I need it and all that stuff? So a, a textbook kind of definition of a catalytic converter, it's an 
exhaust emissions control device that basically takes toxic gases and pollutants and then converts them into less toxic uh, pollutants that then come out of your tailpipe that are safer for the environment. That, that, that's a very generic kind of definition of what it is. If you have a vehicle pre-1975, you don't have to worry about it because I believe it was in 1975 was, was, was when they started showing up on the scene and being put on vehicles and things like that. On 1975 model vehicles, up until 1981, you had what was called a two-way catalytic converter, which pretty much combined oxygen with carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons to produce carbon dioxide and water. And although the two-way converters on gasoline engines were pretty much obsolete after 1981, then came out with what's known as the three-way catalytic converters. Three-way converters require fuel-rich or stoichiometric combustion in order to successfully reduce the oxides of nitrogen. And a lot of people don't realize it, but catalytic converters are not only used on cars and trucks, things like that, but they're also used on electrical generators, forklifts, they're used on buses, they're used also on motorcycles, they're used on ships, and they're also used on locomotives. So that's enough right now for, for this kind of overview of where they are on your vehicle and, and all of the talking stuff. Let's get down to some fun stuff. I'm going to get the borescope camera. We're going to put it in here and we're going to kind of follow how the exhaust gases would come from your exhaust manifold and how it would pass through. And then we'll dive into dissecting this up and talking about what's inside of it. So let me get the camera and let's start heading into this pipe. Let's put this borescope in here and I'll show you. Now, this is how the gas would travel from your exhaust manifold towards the catalytic converter. Let's take a look. Coming from the exhaust manifold, it enters in here. These are your exhaust gases, which are comprised of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen oxide. They come through. They're going to hit first this oxygen sensor. You can see here on the left, that's our upstream O2 sensor. Once it passes that, it'll continue down through the exhaust pipe. And eventually, as it makes this turn, you're going to see right there that honeycomb screen right there. That is our first layer of the catalytic converter that is known as the reduction catalyst. And that's to eliminate the nitrogen oxide. So it'll hit that first before it moves on to the second part, which is the oxidation catalyst on the other side. We're going to move the O2 sensor here so you'll be able to see it on the downstream end. And... Let's go ahead and put this camera in here. I'm going to take it all the way here to the back side of the catalytic converter. So now we saw the gas is going hitting, to hit it, now passing through, and now this is it working its way out. After the gas has passed through the reduction catalyst, they hit this oxidation catalyst here. And then this is the back side of it, that honeycomb screen. The gas continues to flow through, headed towards the muffler. You'll see there's our downstream O2 sensor there on the lower right. It'll continue to work its way out towards the muffler and the tailpipe where it is now converted to water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. All right, so that shows you pretty much how it travels through. Now, your oxygen sensors, you have the upstream and the downstream. Those communicate back and forth, so they're, they're measuring the gases as well. That's how it, you can tell if your catalytic converter is going bad because your downstream O2 sensor and your upstream are communicating. And if they notice any issues, that's how they're pinpointing that this guy right here is your problem. So let's pull one over. I have another one because, as I mentioned at the beginning, the vehicle just came off of head two. So I have the other one. Let's bring that over here. We'll swap this out. And that one's been cut open so we can open it up, take a look at the inside, and I can explain the different things in there and how that works as well. This has all been cut. I used a cutoff tool just to cut this out. And now we can open it and take a look at it. So pull that up gently. You can see what's inside of a catalytic converter. Let's get a close up of this and then we'll be back to talk about what these do. This pipe here, this is coming from your exhaust manifold. So the gases are then passing through here and then headed out to your exhaust pipe here. So you have this first round right here, your, your bigger section right here. This one here 
is for the, is the reduction catalyst. This eliminates your nitrogen oxide right here. Then it passes on. There's a like a honeycomb kind of piece right here that we can't see. But this is your oxidation catalyst right here. And this one here eliminates your carbon monoxide and unburned hydrocarbons before it passes through. You'll notice here along the top, and obviously it's wrapped around the whole thing, but it's kind of this soft material here. You can kind of break it apart right here. This is like an insulation packaging that goes around the whole thing. But the active materials here in the catalyst is aluminum oxide, you have serum oxide, and then you have some rare earth stabilizers, which are made up of platinum, um, palladium, and then also rhodium, which is why people are stealing these things, because they can actually take this and then sell it for the platinum, and then the platinum can be extracted. So this is what they're looking for in here, is this, this material here inside the catalyst, because you have the platinum in there, which is what they're looking for. Now, this chemical process called reduction, which is for this first part right here of the catalytic converter, it breaks up the nitrogen oxides into nitrogen and oxygen gases, which are harmless to us. And then you have the second one here, which has the process that we've talked about already called the oxidation, which is this piece here. And this turns the carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide. Another oxidation reaction turns unburned hydrocarbons in the exhaust into carbon dioxide and water. So that's why we call this here a three-way catalytic converter, because in effect, there's three different chemical reactions going on as it passes through right here. Now, a lot of times when you're getting your catalytic converter engine code saying that there's an issue, it could either be dirt or debris on that honeycomb mesh that we saw when we had the borescope camera go in here from the exhaust manifold coming through. A lot of times that there can be dirt and stuff on there. And that can easily be taken off by using either lacquer thinner. You can run that through your fuel tank. You can also use some additives, like there's Cataclean, there's Duralube has one. There's other ones on the shelf. If you want to see some of my videos where I tested whether the um, lacquer thinner really works or I did product reviews on Cataclean and Duralube, things like that, I'll have them down in the description. Sometimes that can be sufficient, so you don't have to spend all the money to replace your catalytic converter. It can be cleaned. However, sometimes that honeycomb mesh and the filters can actually be damaged and breaking apart, and then you'll be getting obstructions, and that can be causing the issue. In that case, you're going to need to replace your catalytic converter because you don't want to mess around with that because if the exhaust gases can't pass and it's obstructed, it can overheat, can lead to some issues, including fire, so you don't want to play around with that. So it's not a bad idea if you are getting the catalytic converter code, but your car is running fine. If you're if you're driving your car and the car is having some issues with kind of hesitating and kind of kind of rough idle things like that you may have obstruction in here now if you're just getting the code but the car seems fine it may just be dirty and you can put one of those cleaners in there might get the light out so you can at least pass your emissions test but i just wanted to take a few minutes just to talk about this so people understand what the catalytic com uh, converter is for as we saw here when we explained it it takes those harmful pollutant gases passes through these different, if you want to call them filters, or these um, uh, the um, reduction and the oxidation processes through here, and then it cleans it up so when it's coming out, it's not harmful pollutants going into the air. So that's basically what that's for. That's why it's important when you go to for, for your emissions test that when they check that, because that's what they're looking for, because that's where a lot of your harmful gases are coming through if this isn't working right. So I hope that this video was uh, informative for you. I hope it maybe helped helped you to understand more what the catalytic converter is. Also wanted to open it up so you could see here what it looks like. Um, I could have probably cut it even more this way and pulled them out so you could see it, but I think running the bore scope in there, you could see that honeycomb piece, which has the nanoparticles that coat it with the platinum and all those other things on there. But th I just wanted to also explain why people steal these. They're looking for this part right here that has the platinum on it so it can be extracted. So. Please send me any questions and comments. I hope this was informative for you. I hope it helped you out with maybe anything you're working on or just to understand more the catalytic converter and what it does and, and what it's comprised of. But send me any questions. I would love to, to hear from you with, from your comments. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel as I'm constantly posting new content, and I'll see you next time.